The role of negative interest rates. The European Central Bank, ECB in short, is the central bank of 19 member states in the European Monetary Union. The primary objective of the ECB is price stability. The financial and economic crisis in 2007 and 2008 led the European economies in recession. In response, the ECB implemented monetary policy measures to stabilize the Eurozone. In general, the central bank has two monetary policy instruments. First, increasing the money supply. In this case, the central bank purchases corporate and government bonds. Consequently, the member states get additional liquidity to boost public consumption and spending. This policy instrument is called quantitative easing, or QE. Or, second, lowering interest rates. Here, commercial banks obtain cheaper liquidity from the central bank. The lower interest rate is then transferred to businesses and households. In the aftermath of the financial crisis, the ECB mainly utilized this policy instrument, yet without success. Too many businesses and households were suffering from high debt levels and the recession. Therefore, neither businesses nor households increased their demand, nor did they use the cheap bank liquidity for new investments. The economy recovery was thus stuck in a low-growth trap. On these grounds, central banks around the world were looking for new policy measures to stimulate investments and economic growth. However, the central bank's key interest rate was already at the zero lower bound. A further rate cut would move the interest into the negative territory, the so-called negative interest rate. A risky strategy given the unpredictable implications. Experts are debating, would a negative interest rate turn the capital markets upside down? Negative deposit rates are not completely uncommon today. Switzerland, Sweden, Denmark and Japan already have partly negative deposit rates. An example. During the euro crisis, the euro currency experienced a significant loss in value. Consequently, investors relocated their money to safe haven currencies, such as the Swiss franc. These capital movements strengthened the Swiss franc and increased export prices. In order to counteract this development, the Swiss central bank adopted negative rates on deposits such as saving accounts. Now, if investors park their money in safe haven currencies, they have to actually pay interest, which is, of course, not very attractive. In order to get the weak economy back on track, could an overall negative interest rate be a policy option? A positive alternative. With negative interest rates, a loan or debt stock is easily liquidated because the repayment is less than the initially obtained financial asset. Therefore, negative rates reduce debt levels. Borrowing money under negative rates is highly attractive, hence all businesses and households further invest and consume. The higher amount of credit and mortgages could help to facilitate the supply of goods and increase demand as well as kickstart the economy. The higher production output might create more jobs and higher wages. Consequently, this may stabilize the economy and enhance competitiveness. The opportunity. Capital is now redistributed to the businesses and households that are in need of liquidity. This is creating both new supply and demand. The risks. Negative interest rates may create undesired consequences to the capital markets and the overall economy. Money on saving accounts continually loses its value. Consequently, there is a potential of public outrage accompanied with riots and bank runs. People with their money on saving accounts try to escape and withdraw cash from the banking system. This may lead to liquidity shortages in the banking system, endanger financial stability and in the worst case result in another banking crisis. We should point out that both financial stability and price stability are preconditions for economic growth. A negative interest rate might sustainably damage these targets. 
However, without financial and price stability, businesses and households would not invest in the infrastructure and consume, and rather park their money in safe investments such as housing or gold. This again could create acid bubbles and weaken the overall economy. Literally, in an environment of negative interest rates, the most liquid asset such as cash is treated as a hot potato. People with money lose. In order to mitigate these problems, businesses have to closely coordinate supply and demand. This coordination task could, however, harm the economy. The threat. A negative interest rate might encourage financial gamblers. Risk takers and gamblers would make significant profits without any risk by demanding one loan after another. This is a violation to the conventional theory in finance and is called a Ponzi scheme. This unrestrained behavior of financial gamblers might create an incredible money supply outside of the control of the central bank. In the worst case, this generates hyperinflation. Potential implications. In order to mitigate the risks and threats previously discussed, the entire financial system has to be significantly changed. First and foremost, cash must be abolished in a world with negative interest rates in order to prevent cash withdrawals from the banking system. Furthermore, banks, businesses and households have to align the provided credit supply with investments and goods demand. If a smooth money cash flow is not guaranteed, then banks, businesses and households will undergo a financial loss while withholding cash. But would this once more restrain private autonomy? Is there also a need of a completely new state organization to manage this condition task? A negative interest rate will definitely change the financial market and the economy. In what direction is still unclear. Learn more about monetary policy and economics in general on our online course homepage www.reutlingen-university.de